Okay. All right. I want to go to that. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, let me go to our page. Let's see here. It's on yet. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are here today for our discipleship class. And today we're studying from the book, Testimonies for the Church, volume one. And we're going to cover chapters 97 and 98, simply because they're only about a couple of paragraphs each. So, uh, and probably the class will end pretty quick, though, even so, because four paragraphs is not enough to stretch the class to about an hour. But um, in any event, uh, I'm going to uh, share the, here we go. I'm going to share this on my Facebook feed right now. So if anyone wants to share it, go ahead and share it now because um, this is the perfect time to share it. Um, I'm almost done, so bear with me. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, we're gonna have a word of prayer before we get started. And uh, I'm going to pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for another day, for keeping us through another week. We thank you for your blessings, which are new each and every day, Lord God. And um, we just thank you for every breath you give us. Now we ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, as we um, study this uh, message, these two messages today. We ask you to help us to glean the principles of truth from them that you want us to take and uh, help us to incorporate these things into our lives, not just read, not just uh, understand, but do, Lord, because you're coming back to say doers of your word. Um, and uh, we just give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, we're on first, we're going to go through chapter 97 in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1. And this is about circulating the publications. And uh, it's very interesting because she said that it is what, our what, it, it, our duty. what, oh. right, it's our duty to uh, circulate the, Paul, the small publications. So uh, it's so interesting because this week, I was uh, over at the Schnucks Plaza at Cross Keys and there was a young mother there. And now thankfully it had cooled off by this time. I think this was on Friday, maybe Thursday. It had cooled off a little bit by this time instead of those just intense heats that we've been having. And those heats had turned to floods by this point. <laughs> and, um, she was out there with her two little small babies in a in care, you know, strollers. And she had a sign that said that she had lost her job and she needed some help. And usually when I encounter people like that, I, I, I want to give them some one of our publications, something. And, and put the money in that so that they can see that there's also money in there so that they actually open up the publication, you know, even if it's just to take the money out. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was, so I pulled off before I got to her, I pulled off into the parking lot and I was looking, 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 searching for something to give her with the money. And um, I said, I know I have some tracks in here somewhere. But what had happened was we had just come back from Florida and I had taken the public, the tracks that I had out of my car with me in my purse to Florida, my travel purse, <laughs> which is a different person what I had with me that day. And so I had taken all the tracks out because I said, I know I'm going to encounter some homeless people in Florida and uh, I can slip some money in and give it to them. And so I couldn't find any tracks, I couldn't find any in my car. So then I had, but then I kept searching and I had a couple of books and I had uh, uh, Steps to Christ. So I put some money in that and um, gave it to her. And so that, and that to me, that's just a little thing, but that also told me, I need to make sure I have more circulations on me or with me or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So I probably need to order some more, you know? And then I like to put our uh, 
Tabernacle of Praise information somewhere on it, you know, so that if they are looking for a church home or they want to get in touch with us later, they're able to, you know. Uh, but in any event, this says that uh, the first paragraph says that um, that it's our duty to circulate these small publications, which when you think about it like a duty, what do you think about? Do you think that, oh, if I don't have any, I need to order some or find some somewhere and give them out? What do you think about when you think about it as a duty? Well, you know, Karen, I encountered that same lady at Cross Keys uh, Shopping Plaza, and I saw her with the baby. And mm-hmm. I, you, you were right. I went to look for my tracks, and I, I'm like, I keep them on my door handle in the car. Yep. and. So when I couldn't find them, I went ahead and gave her the money. I went in the snooks and then I came back out. And then I was driving to, uh, I was driving down to the library because I was in a hurry to get to my tutoring for my little student. And mm-hmm. do you know, when I got to the library, I got out of my car and they had slid underneath my car seat. And I said, you know <laughs> what? I said, and I had them in a rubber band, right? And I was like, I knew I had some tracks. So, Um, you know, I told myself when I got done tutoring, I was going to go back down there. But, you know, you Uh, get I got busy in the tutoring. But it was just amazing that I always have tracks when I need them. And when I got ready to give her one, I couldn't find that one. Yep, yep. That was the same way with me that day. And I was like, because I keep mine. I have this little shelf in my dash, in my dashboard. And that's where I keep them. I keep my business cards and my tracks right there. And couldn't find nary a one. And then that's when I remembered, oh, I put them in my travel purse. But anyway. Well, I hate uh, to inform everybody, but I do not have any tracks at all. Mm. They're not. See? It might be it might be one or two in my house. It's your duty now. <laughs> you know that now, right? <laughs> <laughs> to get some. So you may have to go online to the ABE. Uh, what is that? Is that? Am I saying that? Right? ABC store. ABC. ABC, right? ABC Adventist Book Center. I can, I and also, uh, uh, um, what is it? Um, uh, the 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 show that Sean Boonstra used to host. Uh, what was that, Andre? Um, they have tracks also. I like their tracks a lot. And then Amazing Facts has tracks too. I well, see. I, I like. I like. I like when I come to the top because you guys have a, a shelf and I'm, I haven't been there in a while, but it usually has publications on there mm-hmm. that you can take. And I said, and those are good too. When you meet people and I said, right. I like that. Right. 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 I, but I, uh, I think it's important though, because I get, I, I do uh, these labels, you know, you can just get the labels from, from like uh, office depot or office max. And I put our church information on there so that people can watch online if they want to. They can attend if they want to, you know, but they know how to get back in touch if they want to, you know. And, and so this, this particular day, I didn't have any labels with me and I barely found a book. So I just wrote on the inside of the book, the, the church's contact information. All right. Uh, any any other comments? Hello. Can y'all hear me? Yes. I was trying to say I have I ordered glow tracks. I passed those out. Oh, okay. Where do you order those from? Um, glow glow. It's a glow dot org. Okay. Okay. Next seven day. Yeah, I'm saying it's good to to know from everybody where you get your tracks from. You know. And so that since it's our duty now, Lakita, <laughs> but uh, in any event, that's good to know, uh, uh, Alvina. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll circulate a list of places that we can. I think the, the best track is uh, Steps to Christ. That is really such an awesome book, you know. Amen. I, wanted to do, I want to do a campaign called. Um, what is it? Twelve thousand steps to Christ. Is that what it mm. is? Twelve thousand steps to Christ, mm. and that you would give out twelve thousand steps to Christ in a year or so. Oh wow, wow, that's a lot. We used to give out this DVD made by Amazing Facts, and it mm-hmm. was like dealing with last day events. 
I don't know if any of you all have seen it. It's an amazing DVD. Yes, it, yes, we it, have it. Uh huh. And uh, we used to be able to get them for like a dollar each because we were ordering them from someplace in was that California, Andre? No, no Minnesota Michigan. or someplace. Michigan. Michigan. Okay. And then they ran out of them because they had ordered pallets of them to be able to, um, you know, sell to people at a low cost. But uh, yeah, because I know the three. If you haven't seen it, get your hands on one. Three A B N. When you, when I went down there, they had them where you they had them in a box and you know get take as many as you want. They were free, uh -huh. so okay. I said that was nice. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh huh. What was it? What was it? A DVD on? Um, last day events. Do you remember Andre? What it was actually called? Um, I might have to send it out. Final later. events. Final, Final events. Something. Yeah, I think something like that. Final. Yeah. Events. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you might be able to get it through 3ABN's website now. Um, because I think that the, the the people we were getting it from in Michigan, they have run out of now. I don't know if they ordered any more, and I would have to do, do a little bit of backtracking to see what that organization was that we ordered them from. But they are excellent, but not something I would give out to homeless people because well, how are they gonna watch it? <laughs> you know, or people I, I can't assume that if they're standing on you know, the street that they have a way to watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like the tracks, the small tracks, or I like the, uh, you know, if you don't have anything else, like you said, Lakita, Steps to Christ. Yeah. And, and you know, Steps to Christ comes with several different covers. So you might want to order some Latino with the Latino cover, some with the black cover, some with the white cover. So depending on who you're giving it out to, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this nicely. <laughs> but I've been getting that one. With, it's so beautiful, though. I, I really love that cover where Jesus is taller than the building. Mm -hmm. And he's knocking at the building like he's knocking at the door of your heart. Uh -huh. I like uh, that. That's yeah, like I said, there's many different covers. So, you mm -hmm. know, just depending on what the Holy Spirit impresses you, which one the Holy Spirit impresses you to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, at that time, let's go back to the, the, the uh, study. And so at that time, she was saying that, and this is something that I had not done before. She was saying that on each of the small tracks that we give out, we should also include other larger publications, like for instance, uh, the conflict series, just information about how to get that or how to obtain it or how to look at it. You know, and now, it used to be with my mother uh, years ago, my mother would have, she bought, she had to buy the CDs for the conflict series. But now you don't even have to do that because they're all available free online. So just a link, you know, information to a link to, to, to Ellen White's uh, publications, you know, uh, would be all that you would need to put on there. But this is saying, don't just leave it at the small little tracks. Make sure you have information on there or they can access, you know, all the spirit of prophecy or whatever. On the back, on the back of the glow track, they have where you can get Bible studies or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is saying not only is it our duty to give out the small publications, but make sure we have there a way to access the larger publication. You know, if if someone is interested, it's not saying give out. You know, go and give out. Uh, copies of the conflict series, but it's saying make it accessible, a link accessible or something so that they can get access to those larger publications. Um, any other comments on that? You know, uh, we watched, uh, my husband and I watched uh, a program, was that last week, Andre? About uh, Henry, uh, I'm sorry, Miller, the Millerite movement and yes. then transitioned into Ellen White's early days. And uh, what was interesting is that I did not know that, was it was it the Review and Herald, Andre, that started with Miller and, I, uh, and not the Adventist movement? Was it Tale of the World, that movie? No. Yeah, um, um, it might have been. It might have been. Um, but uh, I did not know that that particular publication started with the Millerites. 
And before they were even called Adventists or before they even became Adventists or some of them. And uh, I so think it, it might have been a sign in the times. It might have been. That might have been exactly it. what it was. Yeah, sign of the times, which I always thought was a, an Adventist publication from the start, you know, but it wasn't. And so I learned something there. Um, and then she says that the small tracks, which is, you know, the, the little ones, the little pamphlets that, that, that we can get to hand out, she says they can be furnished for a trifle and they don't cost much. You can get like 200 and a hundred of them or 250 for a small sum, you know, under $20 or at $20 or something like that. So, like five ninety nine for a hundred. Okay, yeah. So I'm just saying it doesn't cost much. Alvina, and, did, let me say, ask Alvina, did you say it was called Tell the World? What talking about the movie? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what we watched. Tell the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting because it was pretty long, but it held your interest throughout the whole thing, which because yep. you know, it was more than two hours long, but it held your interest. And it was interesting to learn about the early, the early. Adventist history like that. And um, it was interesting because what I learned about William Miller was that he was, before he was a farmer, he was a, he was a, he was a higher, he was like a ranking officer in, was it the Union Army, Andrew? Or was it, I think it was the Union Army. Yeah, I think so. Then he went from there to become a judge and then from there to become a farmer and from a farmer to, to a minister without any formal training for, for being a minister, but he was studying and the Holy Spirit was leading him. And he, he, his wife was telling him, you need to preach. He said, I'm not a learned man. I, I haven't been, I haven't studied. I, I, basically, I'm gonna say it like this. I haven't been to Andrews University and I don't, I don't have no degrees or anything. And so uh, he, so, so she kept pressing him. You didn't, finally, huh? you didn't mention Oakwood, go ahead. <laughs> right, right. Well, Oakwood used to not offer the higher degree. It offered the, uh, you know, undergraduate degree, uh, and then you had to go, you had to go to the seminary after that to get the higher degree. But uh, I think now Oakwood is offering a, uh, um, at least a uh, master's. Right. And all you Oakwoodites out there, don't get mad at me if I'm not saying this right. <laughs> Um, but uh, I think it offers a master's program in divinity now. But um, anyway, so his uh, Miller's wife kept urging him. And so finally he said, well, if somebody invites me, then I'll go. And no sooner had he said that pretty much that I don't know if it was the same day or the next day. Somebody knocked on their door and said, uh, our minister is going to be gone on this Sunday. This was before they they had received the, the Sabbath message. And our minister is going to be gone on Sunday, and he would like you to come and, and and speak to our to our members. And he was mad, baby. <laughs> he was mad, but he told the Lord. He went out and he went out into the woods, and he said, "Well, I promise you, if somebody asked me, I would do it." So he did it, and that's how he started his his ministerial career, I guess. I'm I'm still confused how the Holy Spirit. He didn't give him all the light, all as thinking Jesus was gonna come. You well, know? but think about it. You know what? The 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 we're supposed to search the scriptures as if we're searching for buried treasure. And so, as far as he knew, he had searched the scriptures. Now he didn't actually set a date. He set a time frame, but other people had set a date for Jesus to come, but he didn't actually set the date. And the first date that they set was in 1830, I'm saying 1843, but they didn't take into account the zero year. So mm. then once they, once that date passed and they realized the zero year, then they changed it to the following year, 18, autumn of, he said autumn of 1844. He never set a date. Mm hmm but other people set an actual date. Uh, there was someone that came to them and said, well, when you count, when you count this and calculate that, and he was actually right in the calculations. He mm -hmm. was just wrong in 
where the sanctuary was. And they thought it was the earthly sanctuary when it was the heavenly sanctuary. So the, the actual date that they set, the day was correct. It just was the wrong place. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yes, I believe too, I believe that we, we are ever learning too. You know, mm-hmm, we probably, mm-hmm. you know, if we're struck down in death, we won't have the whole message. We don't know the whole thing. We don't know everything. Right. Because we'll be ever learning throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity if we make it into the kingdom. So, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I Excuse think me. that that's God. Excuse me. Huh? Excuse me. You mean when we make it into the kingdom? When? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I like that better, Lakita. <laughs> I do. I like that better. <laughs> so, so um, I think it was the Lord's intention and it's his intention for all of us to study, to show ourselves approved. And when we, when he imparts light and we, and we walk in that light, then if we keep studying, he imparts more light. Well, they were walking in the light. And when the event did not happen in the autumn of 1844 passed, not necessarily the day, but the autumn of 1844 passed, then they were like, okay, where did we go wrong? And they went back to the word of God and they figured it out. And in the process of figuring that out, they got the Sabbath message. Yeah, but some left the faith. Some like just gave up in disappointment because they didn't sold all their belongings and all that. Right, right, right. right. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. But then, you know, there's going to be in these last days, there's going to be many who depart from the faith because they lose their hold on God. They lose their grasp, you know, and the devil is always going to be there until the end, trying to distract us and get us to be discouraged and, you know, not stick, not keep our hand in the Lord's. He's going to do it. He's going to, because everyone that he, everyone that he causes to be lost, he's not going to have to burn for. So, you know, he's going to do his best. Mm hmm. And, and more is- so, not even so, not even so much that that is his incentive. It is that he wants people to serve him instead of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's his incentive. All right. Um, let's see. So basically, uh, yeah, we're supposed to be writing um, or putting a link to our larger publications on the tracks when we hand them out. And then she also says, don't, don't scatter the tracks randomly. Like autumn leaves, she said, but, but give them, hand them to people who might prize them. And you know, what's interesting. Um, every time I give someone money that's on the street or whatever, and I put it inside a track, do you know that when I'm driving off, I see them, I know they take, they see the money. So they take that out first. And then I see them open the track and they're looking at the track. Mm-hmm. And so that's a good thing. That makes you feel good to know that, okay, they didn't just take the money out and cast the track aside. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, I remember. And you know, my comment to that, Karen, is I gave a track to a, a gentleman at, at a, a the gas station and we kind of talked for a few minutes but it was funny because when I went to hand him a track he said you Jehovah Witness so you Mm. know even though you know there's people that you know won't let the Jehovah Witness in and everything if if we had that kind of determination to go out and just pass out literature you know I'm saying maybe you and I'm saying everybody you know everybody's not the same some people do on Sabbath they make that you know when they get out of church or wherever, they, if they listen to a message or whatever, they're going to get out and pass out literature. Mm-hmm. But it's funny to know that this gentleman, he, he, he was bold enough to say, are you Jehovah Witness? And mm-hmm. I said, and then, I, you know, I gave him the track and we talked about it. And you're right, when I, when I pulled off from the gas station, I said, I saw him reading it. But, you know, just to know that we're not the only ones out there trying to pass our literature, but we have the true message to pass out with our literature through the Holy Spirit. And mm-hmm. I said, so, you know, there, it, it, these, there are people out there that want to get something to read that they know is going to follow the Bible. Right, right. You know, because there's so many different stuff, so many different types of um people out there giving out messages, how people 
if people find the truth is truly a miracle. So let me ask you this, because you know, Jehovah Witness people come to our door all the time and they're handing out tracts. Do you do it? Does anybody ever read the other tracts? I've read some of that stuff. Yeah, I've read yeah. it. Mm-hmm. It's confusing. Okay. That stuff is very yeah. confusing. Okay. Okay. I put it down meaning to read it later, but I've never actually picked it back up to read it. One time Jehovah Witness came to my house and I invited them in and Mm -hmm. they came in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they were going to do a Bible study or something. So they was reading the Bible and it didn't say what my Bible said. I was reading the same verse. I said, wait a minute. I said, that's not the same verse. It's not what it (laughs) said. Then they was like, oh, we reading it from our Bible. I said, from whose Bible? They talking about from this is the Jehovah Witness Bible. I said, mm-hmm. so you guys, whatever y'all learn is not the basic stuff in the regular Bible. You got your own Bible. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. I said, well, yep. you know, my Bible don't say what yours mm-hmm. says. I don't see how we can study mm-hmm. the Bible. And they were saying, well, we're going to study. You can have one of our. I said, no, no, no. You mm-hmm. get one of the regular Bible that everybody else is reading. And then let's have a, a Bible study. So mm-hmm. we couldn't agree on it. it was two women and it was a man and mm. the, uh so i said well before you go let's have a word of prayer so they was hesitating something i could pick up there was something i said well what's the problem they're like well um a woman don't pray in front of her husband the, the head of the household yeah. pray. and i said and i said right this is my house so i'm gonna pray and so then mm. they're like well this mm. is her husband i said but he's not my husband this is not his house. Mm-hmm. So I said, but it's okay. You know, we pray to the same God, right? I said, so then he can pray. I said, mm-hmm. but this is my house. He doesn't have, he doesn't really have a right to pray. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, and that see, battle spirit. But I know that I didn't gain any friends that particular day. And mm-hmm. or anything. Well, but you I know, I find that the Jehovah Witnesses want to impress their version of the truth on you, but they don't want to hear what you believe the truth is. That's no, true. Actually, I had given a person. They, won't take, they want to give your. They want to get take, have you take their literature, but they don't want to take anything yeah, they, that we have to give. In yeah, fact, exactly. in fact, let me tell you this. I asked one of them. They were selling their their, their material. I said, "Have you read this?" And she was like, "No." I uh-huh. said, do, "And she?" I said, "You haven't read this?" And she said, "No." I said, "So you're giving it to me?" I said, "Do you buy these?" I said, "Do you give these books for yourself?" She was like, "No." I said, so you tell me you don't get this in your house and you don't read this, but you're giving it to me and you don't want to read it and you don't read it. And mm. she was kind of quiet. I said, no, thank you. I don't want you don't even read it. So why would I do that? Right. I had a person stop by. So <clears throat> they didn't believe I was going to talk to them, you know, because most time people don't answer the door or close the door or whatever. So mm. I talked to them, you know, I had a nice little chat with them. And mm. then they said, well, here's some literature. I said, hold on. I said, uh, I, you give me literature, I'll give you some literature. And like mm-hmm. Patsy was saying, they didn't want to take my literature. So I was like, so why should I take your literature if you're not willing to take mine? Mm-hmm. And so I said, here, I said, let's do this. I'll, I'll read your literature, you read mine, and then come back next week and we'll discuss it. Mm-hmm. That guy never did come back. Mm-hmm. I've, been they, 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 I've offered to study with people, they won't come back. Mm-hmm. Did he take the literature though? Yeah, he took it because I wasn't gonna take his without it. Oh, oh okay. He probably just threw it away. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, unless anybody had any other comments uh, about well, that's what literature. you just said brought up a good point too. If we give people literature, the word of God, and they throw it away, that's on them. Mm-hmm. We've done what we're called to do, and the Lord's mm-hmm. promised. His word won't go out won't return void. Right. So give it to them and they threw it away. That's going to come up to them in the judgment, possibly. And the Lord can also work on that person and say, hey, you just threw away something that you need to be reading. So I never right. really worry about if they throw it away. I just do my part. Let the right. Holy Spirit deal with so that. Let me, let me tell this story and then we'll go on to the next chapter. So when we were doing the homeless ministry downtown, and we would go down there. We went down in the morning, one Sabbath morning, because we went down to pick people up that wanted to come to church. And so I gave this guy that we kind of knew at that point because we, we had been going down there for a while. 
I gave him a copy of, I think it was either The Great Controversy or The Desire of Ages, right? So when we went back in the afternoon after church, you know, because we always eat after church and all that. So uh, when we went back in the afternoon to drop the people back off, um, one of the guys that we kind of knew too, uh, he came up and he said, hey, I want you to see this, the most amazing book that I found. And, I, and so uh, I said, well, where'd you find it? He said, well, it was sitting on the steps right here. He said, and I opened it up and it is just amazing. And it was the book that I had gave the guy, the other guy in the morning. Wow. Check this out. That book was meant for him anyway. Right. You know that. <laughs> right. That, that and I don't think the other guy necessarily threw it away. He just must have set it down and walked off to do something. And then the other guy found it and. Yeah, it was meant for him because he just thought it was wonderful. And he just, mm. he said, I read the first few pages and I'm going to have to read this whole thing. Mm. What kind of book was it? Which one was it? It was, it was either, it was either the Great, Great Controversy or the Desire of Ages. Because those are the two that I know I had at that time. So you, did you snatch it out of his hand and said, is that not for you? Give it back. No, 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 of course not. I was like, okay, God, I, I see you. <laughs> and so... And that's just, that's just amazing how the Lord works. And, you know, and even if the other guy just set it down, not intending to leave it, it was meant for this other person who actually opened it up as soon as he saw it, you know? So, all right, let's move on to chapter 98, uh, the health reformer. And uh, this starts out, I'm just going to read this first paragraph. Well, it's only two paragraphs, so I might read the whole thing and then we'll discuss it. So it says, the people are perishing for want of knowledge, says the apostle. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. After receiving the faith of the gospel, our first work is to seek to add virtuous and pure principles and thus cleanse the mind and heart for the reception of true knowledge. Disease of almost every description is pressing upon the people yet they seem willing to remain in ignorance of the means of relief and the course to pursue to avoid disease. Uh, any comments on that? I, I'm just going to pause there um, since there's only two paragraphs in this, this chapter. So any comments on that? Um, Something that, go ahead. You know, I'm reading, um, I decided since I want to get my diet in, in order and rest, just live the health, the, um, uh, the health message in my life, right? Mm -hmm. I decided to read Councils on Diets and Foods. Mm -hmm. Don't read it. Don't read it. <laughs> yeah, read it. Read it. Because it will change your life. It really will. Because I used to teach that class. And it will change your life. Yeah, now, for Adventists, for Adventists, um, and we were watching, Andre and I were watching uh, the show on 3ABN last night the, with the blue sickness guy. I don't know if you all know what I'm talking about. It's one guy that, that, that's advocating health on the other guy. Uh -huh. He's dressed in all blue. So and he's had a dream. Yeah, he's sickness and he just, he, he don't want you to do none of the stuff that the other guy is saying because he flourishes, sickness flourishes, you know, when you don't do the things, the health things. And um so, yeah, I think about that, Lakita, and I think about the fact that if we did more to preserve our health, then we would be much better off. Now, some things are just going to be hereditary, hereditary predispositions and hereditary because we do live in a, a world that is controlled by the enemy. And he, yeah, he but wants you know what, Karen, if we change, for example, my father was an alcoholic and there really is a um uh dna you know a dna um component to alcoholism a generational but curse here's, but here's the thing if you well, if you don't ever drink alcohol you will not become an alcoholic but with mm. this comp uh component it's some type of um some type of chemical that's in the body or whatever. But with this, with that, if you not everybody in the family won't get it. So some people can drink a drink and, and walk away. But mm -hmm. the person who has this will drink and become instantly addicted to mm -hmm. alcohol. And mm -hmm. they will have a full-blown addiction. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, there's this is why I said there are we are 
predisposed to some things, but if we never, if we change the way the Bible says, uh, the, but the Lord having um, mercy upon them, uh, you know, the iniquity of the father is going down to the third and fourth generation, but God showing mercy upon thousands of them who love them, him mm. and keep his commandments, change mm. the way you live and mm. you will never, you won't suffer those things. Right, right, right. And, 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 and you know what? The Lord promised us that if we obey his statutes and commands, he will not put on us the diseases that he put on the Egyptians. Mm-hmm. And I think about, I think about COVID, for instance, and I think about how many people died from COVID before there was a vaccine. And I think about the fact that my husband and I didn't get it until we had been vaxxed and boosted, you know, so our symptoms were, cause he, 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 he didn't believe he had it because he, he was expecting symptoms to be much worse. And I had to remind him, I said, well, you know, we've been vaxxed and boosted. So we're not going to get that severity that will come if we were unvaccinated, you know? And I said, that was God in his mercy, uh, you know, allowing us, sparing us during that period when there was no vaccination and people were dying, like dropping like flies, you know? All right. And um, Andre, uh, when I, when I get done, I want you to tell about what uh, Paul Harris told you about today. All right. Uh, Any more comments on the first paragraph? Okay. So there's a lot that we can do to avoid sickness and disease I remember somebody saying, and I've heard more than one person say this, that during COVID, they didn't get colds and flu and all of that because everybody was wearing masks and gloves, you know? So there was a lot of stuff that normally, and they said that the incidence of people that died from flu went way, 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 way down um, during COVID because, because, you know, initially people were um, doing the masks and the gloves and, you know, disinfecting stuff, all of that. Well, I hope one thing I hope that we take out of the pandemic is if you're sick, please stay home. Mm-hmm. Because I think about the people who got the flu and passed on, you mm-hmm. know, before we knew about wearing masks to prevent right. this stuff. You know, right. it's rude to go to church and you're sick. I just think yes. it's rude. Yeah. And it's after recognizing that colds and flus and all kind of contagious disease went down. Seem like people would take that and say, "Hey, well, I'm going to do this all the time." But at least no, during the winter time, goes right back to normal. Well, yeah, during the winter time, at least during the winter time, when those things are 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 prevalent, you know. But yes, I I agree with you on that. But people people value their freedom more than their health, <laughs> you know, and they don't, don't want know people. You know what? Uh, I don't know if they really value that freedom so much as they just want to fight against the person on the opposite side. If, yep. if, if Trump or they come out and say, yes, we need to wear two masks every day. We need to wash your hands at least 15 times. Those <laughs> other people would have said, no, I'm not. And then these people who came out against it will be like, yes, yes, because he knows everything. Mm-hmm. Well, it says in that bottom of that first paragraph, talking about people realizing the impact of disease, yet they seem willing to remain in ignorance of the means of relief and course to pursue to avoid disease. People Mm -hmm. don't care to avoid disease, but when they get a disease, they want a pill to immediately make them well. And is she talking about church members or just people in general? Is that fine? Probably people in general, because she's not limiting it to, to church members. Uh, it was interesting because last night, show that we were watching about sickness and and, and health, uh, they were discussing uh, the pros and cons of you know because the world says well if you drink one glass of wine every day that will help you and help your health, but then they showed that there was conflicting information and they said that if you uh, was it or was it caffeine Andre was it was it wine or caffeine anyway wow. and uh. It said that what they found is that older people, like over 50, if they're doing that, it shortens their lifespan. So even though on the one hand, it may help your digestive system, it's going to shorten your lifespan. So what would you rather have, a longer lifespan and do other things to help your digestive system? You know, like take a probiotic every day or something like that. 
or stick to the fact, oh, well, they're saying that it's good to have, you know, a glass of this or a cup of that, you know, every day. And so it's a, it, it's a balancing thing. But well, not only that, there's that secondary problem. If you have, and if you have alcoholism in your family, right. and you take that one little sip every day, right? you may be the person that's automatically up. Mm-hmm. addicted to it. You know, that's, that's the one thing. And then another thing about that too is, what about, you know, like diabetes? Because isn't alcohol full of sugar? I mean. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Hey. Right. Don't give your body a break. I think it's true with a lot with human beings. Many people just want to do what they want to do, so they'll look for an excuse or a reason to do it. Like a lot of people used to <clears throat> to drink wine and say, "Well, Jesus drank wine," or the Bible says, "Take a little wine for your stomach's sake," and all that type of thing. You know, just taking it out of context because they want to drink wine, and that's the bottom line. Right, and one of the things they brought up. Hey, okay, I, I I believe what Elder Carroll is saying because I've had people that say, "Why did you go and get that fourth booster? Don't you know that the y'all people that's getting boosted is catching that COVID virus too?" And I always, you know, and I just kind of listen and I say, "But it's not as severe, you know." And I say, "I have right. to do what what right. I think God is, is right. providing for me. Maybe right. He's not providing that information for you, but." Right. You know, I'm one of them people. I do have the chronic, some chronic illnesses, and I said, but my thing of it is, I think the ignorance comes in when the people that haven't got the shots and stuff, they keep putting other people down, and they make comments, well, you know, look what kind of faith you have, which couldn't be too strong on God. And I'm like, but that has nothing to do with my faith in God. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit and right. Jesus. If I'm right. led wrong, God's not going to strike me down. I said, right. because... You know, I said, this is what, you know, and I, and I prayed about it and I said, but I'd rather be and how they say error on the safe side than to mm-hmm. error and then finally catch something that I can't, that my body can't fight off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Let's go and give it to somebody else. Yeah. 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 And I have, yeah. I have, I have a whole viewpoint about uh, the people who say, uh, where's your faith when you don't take the vaccine? Because, and I'm just going to make it really short, (laughs) that uh, when you look at uh, when the snakes were sent among the children of Israel in the wilderness, the faith was not in not getting bitten because that's not, there were people of all um, levels of faith in, in the children of Israel, among the population of the children of Israel. And that had nothing to do with their level of faith. It had to do with their belief in the remedy that God provided. And to me, God has provided this vaccine. It is a, it's not, it's not a cure. It's not a fix, but it lessens the symptoms like you were saying, Patsy. And so it, it, it's not a death sentence per se anymore for, for the, for the majority of people. And so, and came, go ahead. And, and so to me, when you look at it and you look at the snakes in the wilderness, all he said was, all you have to do is look and live. That had nothing to do really with your level of faith. It just had to do with your belief in the remedy. And so it, 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 it had nothing to do with, okay, uh, well, you know what? All you have to do is believe that you won't get bit. That wasn't it. That wasn't it at all. Yeah, it comes. Alvin, do you want to say something? Yeah, and the vac- vaccination, it came out very quickly versus years it takes to come out with a vaccine. Well, the truth truth about that is that COVID is like the common cold, but for whatever, this is a common cold with a twist that'll kill you. Right. (laughs) They had already been studying on the common cold trying to figure it out. But they, about a year before COVID came out, they lost funding. And so they stopped looking at the common cold. And so now, but it's very interesting, like you said, Alvina, how quickly God is just so good to us. How quick he just, it's like um, it's like uh, that one thing where people were dying, and then I think Moses had to run amongst the people with uh, even Moses the with yeah. the sense right. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that's how God <laughs> went to us. You know, He went and He said, "My children are dying. Even my children are dying." And so 
we I'm going to uh, people are dying, going into crisis grace, which is what Satan wanted. You know, people get right. sick and in two weeks they were dead. You know, right. they didn't have the opportunity to meet with their, their loved right. ones for people to pray for them that final time. You know, but God was just so merciful to us. And he was like, enough of that. We're right. going to hear, hear you guys take this and live. And right. it's about obedience to yep. me, you know. Um, and I don't know how anybody can tell you what God tells you to do. Because I think somebody right. might be looking at Moses getting ready to walk across the Red Sea and say, this man is just stupid. He's so yeah. dumb. I'm going to go back and beg the Egyptians to take me back. See? <laughs> <laughs> What about those pastors who were defying health orders in the beginning, just holding church when everybody was dropping like flies? What about some them? Some of those. Some of them died. died. Yes, they did. Yeah, a lot of them died. But in the God, how did God look upon them, bringing people to their to their death early? Yeah. Well, they didn't come to their death early. They came when they were going to die. But here's the thing: because they were following a man instead, instead of, of God. Spirit. Yeah, you know, and you just can't, you know. I, I don't see how anybody can say, I've heard people insinuate that you're just scared. Let me tell you something. Fear is a great motivator. I mean, like if somebody got a gun and they're <laughs> shooting in the in the mall, you think I'm going to go in the direction and say, well, I'm, my store is going, I'm going to walk past. Right. That's stupid. I'm right. going to go out the you're back just door. You're scared, Lakita. you just scared. That's right. Yeah. Think, think about, think about think bullet going by your head of the children of Israel plus the Israelites who saw that even though they didn't believe in the true God, they saw that in the Israelite camp, all of this, all these uh, plagues were not happening. Mm -hmm. And so they got themselves over to the Israelite camp. Yeah, they did. They yeah, and the truth is, shouldn't you be afraid of dying? Mm, no, no. You're not going to die. Yo, I'm going to take the caution Christ, not to. It's not if you're in Christ. Nobody wants to go early. Why would you uh, want to die? Well, nobody wants happened. to die, period. Don't nobody want to die. Yeah. I well, there are some people who take their own life. There are some people who do want to die. But, but you yeah. know what? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. They don't want to die, Karen. They want to stop the pain. They can't figure out how to stop the pain, whether it's emotional or physical pain. They tired of it. They don't have, they don't have the resources to make a better choice. So that's that's what that's about. People want, you know, this man who jumped off the gateway bridge in California, he was like, he gave, he just wanted somebody to say, you know, don't do it. Right. He cried on the bus to get to the gateway. Nobody paid attention to him. Mm. He got off the bus. He was crying. You know, then he walked up to the gateway bridge. He was crying. And this woman came over and he said, oh, here's somebody. They're going to encourage me. He was giving his testimony. And so she came up to him and said, could you take a picture of me? Even though he was crying. And so he mm -hmm. was like, that was proof that nobody wanted. He said when he jumped off of that gateway bridge, he survived. When he jumped off, he thought, I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. So mm -hmm. people, I don't believe that they want to die. They won't, don't like their living situation and don't know how to live or how to stop the pain. And I think God puts in us the will and the desire to live. He says, I give you life more abundantly. Choose life that you may live. Now, one of the best replies I heard to people saying, oh, your faith, you don't have any faith if you don't, if you do it, or you don't have faith if you're not coming to the church building, or you don't have faith, this or that. And the guy, I forgot who the preacher was, but he said, I have faith in God, but I still wear oven mitts. Mm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it's That's just, right. that's foolishness uh, right there for real. That's presumption. That's because yeah. to think that. Yeah. Well, plus, and plus, it's judgmental. It's like, who are you? You don't get to judge my faith. It's very judgmental right. and to say that and stuff, you know. But I'm going to get me a fourth booster, too. It's mine. It's going to come. If this is August, uh, it's going to be in September. I don't know why I'm waiting for September, but that's when I'm impressed that I'm going to take my, my next booster in September and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I've had COVID. I might have had COVID, just didn't know it, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I just feel like you know the Lord is saying, take another shot, you know. Now this is what I want to throw in too. Y'all better be uh, very conscious of this monkeypox because it's spreading, and they said it comes from touch. So just be conscious of that. I ain't touching nobody. Alvina, don't ask me for a hug next week because I ain't touching nobody. <laughs> 
I'm um, just you don't know you don't know if it's if it's touch from okay you go to the grocery store you don't wipe off the cart and you touch something that someone has touched or you pull the door open door open you pull the door open or you go to the gas station and you get the gas thing and you you don't have a glove or whatever you know what I'm saying you know what I was thinking uh, what about a person getting monkey pox and uh COVID at the same time oh my what goodness all that COVID pox um, yeah Kovacs. <laughs> And also, that's why we got those um, hand sanitizers for after you do those things. Hurry right. up and, 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 and actually, we should be keeping that with us or some of those wipes with us so that when we're going, if you don't want to wear gloves, at least wipe off what you get ready to touch. You know? Uh, what do y'all guys think about? I've been feeling, about. I have been feeling this, but I've been feeling a sense of urgency about this. Trying to stock up on stuff again because of, uh, I don't know why, I just kind of think we might be coming into something. Well, if that's what the Lord, if that's what the Holy Spirit is telling you, do it. <laughs> I know where to go. So, <laughs> what yeah. you say? What you say? Uh, I just, I just, I, me personally, I just hear the Spirit saying, you know, you need to be cautious of what you touch now, again, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get to that point where the Spirit says, yeah, stock up on those things. Yeah, I get to, I, I hadn't even thought about the monkey pox. I thought it was just like a, it was being uh, transmitted sexually. I didn't hear that. Uh -uh, close they, they, they have come short of saying that. They have said that it is transmitted through touch is what they're saying. Mm. So, uh, and they're not saying that only gay people have it. They're not saying that. So well, You can't say that because people are on the spectrum now from gay to and there's know. people on the down low <laughs> yeah you know so they don't have to be down low now they can just say it now well yeah they can just say i'm non-binary or i'm uh what's some of, some of those other terms you know yeah i can't do it or I'm, 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 I'm right i'm fluid. fluid that's it that's it or don't call me he she call me they <laughs> which is the craziest thing to me but you know. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, all right, let's let's go on to the, the last paragraph here. Um, it says, in the establishment of the Health Institute, it was the, 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 excuse me, the design of God, not only that knowledge might be imparted to the comparatively few who should visit it, but that the many might be instructed as to home treatment. The health reformer is the medium through which way, rays of light are shine upon the people. Now, we don't have that. Uh, it may be in her publications, but it's not widely di disseminated anymore. And it uh, should be the very best health journal in our country. It must be adapted to the wants of the common people, ready to answer all proper questions and fully explain the first principles of the laws of life and how to obey them and preserve health. I don't even know if that, that, if that has been updated or if they're even still printing that, but we, we could look into that and see. Might be under uh, another name. It might be. The great object to be kept in view by the publication of such a journal should it be the good of the suffering people of God. The common people, especially those too poor to attend the Institute, must be reached and instructed by the health reformer. So, yeah, that's something that we have to class. And that's going to be our homework assignment is to uh, see if that's even still in publication. And well, you know, it's, it's on your it, app. I just looked it up. It's on the app. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. That's maybe something that we need to read in, on our own time, you know, um, so that we are familiar with it. And again, I don't know whether it's been updated or not, because, you know, she was writing back in mostly the 1800s, uh, up through, she died in 1915, I believe. So, uh, <clears throat> any comments on that? <clears throat> um, no, I don't have comments. Okay. All right, well, that's our homework, to, to find out more about that and uh, to look through it at least and see if there's anything that we can bring to the class that would help us on the you know in the area of health reform all right um okay lee where are we next week uh next week we're in christmas service book and it's sub still chapter one main chapter but sub chapter is women as missionaries okay. women as missionaries Okay. Everybody on the line, 
just keep me in your prayers on Wednesday because they're going to go through the, the my back with the sciatic nerve. I think they're going to do uh, put some shots mm-hmm. in me. And so just keep me in your prayers on Wednesday. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, uh, lead a prayer sound and he can put you in, your pr- in, in the prayer right now also. Okay. And he, me and Andre in prayer too. So we, we can get over the after effects of this uh, COVID and my health in general. Also. Okay. And oh, and reminding also, everybody to vote August 2nd. Uh, we already did. We went and did, we did absentee voting. So <clears throat> where they let you pull up to the curb and, and, and vote. Uh, also remember uh, in prayer, uh, Lee, my uh, uncle, uncle who is stage four cancer and uh, my uh, aunt who they had to take her to the ER this week because they thought she had a stroke, but they said that it was, uh, I forgot exactly what they said it was, but it was less than a stroke. So they, they'll just, they'll be able to give her medication for it. And then I have another aunt who, she just had surgery, so she's recovering from surgery. So, and then also remember Jeremy Winston in Florida, who is uh, Pastor Jay Winston's son, who is suffering from stage four pancreatic cancer that has spread to his liver. Mm. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for a beautiful, blessed discussion time with our discipleship class. We thank you for your word, the words of your prophet, which have led us and directed us to understand more about your awesome power and your love for us. We ask and pray that you'll look down upon us, dear Lord, have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. Lord, we petition you for a special prayer for Patsy as she has upcoming activities going on. We pray that you will give her strength, help her to be positive-minded and allow all things to go according to your blessed will. We ask that you'll be with Alvina's children as they are Continuing through college, we pray that you'll be with them, watch over them, and help them to draw closer to you. We pray also for uh, Sister Paula's work situation, that you'll bless her to be a lighthouse wherever she goes, and that you will bless her, dear Lord, and honor her efforts to be faithful to you. And we ask also prayers for Karen and Andre's health, that they'll continue to recuperate, Lord. We thank you for blessing them to be safe and to have minimum symptoms. We also ask that you'll Bless their uncle, uh, bless also uh, Jeremy Winston, and bless their aunt Karen and Andre's aunt as well, Lord, in the situations of illness that they're in. We know that you are the great physician and that there is nothing too hard for you, and we ask that you'll touch them with your healing hand, dear Lord, and heal our bodies, dear Lord, heal our minds to accept your will in whatever we do. We ask that you'll bless Lakita also and her family, uh, you know what needs they each have, my side of family as well, dear Lord. Continue to be with us in all ways, Lord. Help us continue to let your light shine out from us. That others may see our good works and glorify you in heaven. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before we get off, Amen. Live, before we get off live, I wanted Andre to tell us about what uh, Paul Harris told him about today. So I don't know what the name of this thing is, but um And we'll find that out and, and if you're interested, yeah, give it to so, you. Yeah, me and Paul went to school with a, a young lady, and she gave this supplement. I don't want to call it a, a medicine, but this supplement helps with uh, diabetes and blood pressure. But his wife had had some problems going up and down the steps, and she was out of breath. And she went to the doctor. They did a CT scan on her lungs and <clears throat> found out she had emphysema, which was really kind of crazy because she's never smoked or been around smoke a lot. So anyway, they had all these appointments set up for her, follow-up appointments on how they were going to treat it. But she started taking this supplement, and a week later, I think Friday, yesterday, the doctor called her and told her he, they cannot find any signs of emphysema in her lungs at all. Mm. Um, he told her, whatever appointments we have set up for you from here on out, cancel all of them. There's absolutely nothing you need to come see me for at all. There is nothing wrong with your lungs now. Everything is gone. So uh, I'm not mm-hmm. sure what it's called. I'm not sure what this supplement is, but um, we'll get a we'll get a name for you. But uh, it's it's it just completely removed any issue she had with her lungs. To God be the glory. Is she still suffering symptoms though? 
I don't think she has any more. She says she feels much better, um, breathing much better and everything. And so doctor so told her told not, yesterday everything is, is clear. She doesn't see any problems with her lungs. It wasn't a well, please call and let me know the name of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll we'll find out and uh, make the class aware. Yeah, not, I don't get text. Remember. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, Patsy. <laughs> you need to come into the twenty first century, Patsy. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, let's go offline.